brought to you by GTA. We start with you. It's unfortunate that uh, lives were lost, but you know, I mean, we still have uh, to bring justice to the family. We still work at providing um, the justice to uh, the community and, and making sure that those that are apprehended, we do garner the conviction. 36-year-old Matthew Manabusin appeared for his magistrate's hearing over the weekend. According to the complaint, the murder defendant is claiming self-defense. Court documents state that he allegedly admitted to shooting 25-year-old Joshua Menno in Dededo on April 15th. He faces murder as a first-degree felony with special allegation for possession or use of a deadly weapon in the commission of a felony. Police launched an investigation after Menno's lifeless body was found on Ha'asu Drive on Swamp Road. As Guam Police Department spokesperson Sergeant Paul Tapao explains, their criminal investigation division has successfully located suspects for each multiple death investigations launched this year. The Guam Police Department is able to, you know, in a timely, I want to say timely manner, in an expeditious manner, uh, we were able to garner and, you know, effectuate an arrest for the individuals that were responsible for all these cases. Court documents state officers saw a blood trail from Menno's deceased body that led toward a residence off the roadway, where Manabusin was staying with several others. Officers learned Menno had stopped by the house to have a cigarette and dinner, where he allegedly got into an argument with another person in the home and struck the person on the neck with a machete. The person reportedly ran into the home and alerted Manabusin, who walked out of his house with a pistol and shot Menno. Officers noted what appeared to be a gunshot wound on Menno's lower right rib area. Documents state Manabusin admitted to shooting Menno, but claims Menno had been threatening his cousins while brandishing a machete, and he was afraid Menno would hurt them, so he shot him first. Manabusin told officers where the pistol was, which authorities recovered within a hidden compartment inside a school bus that was stationed beside the home. Manabusin did not have a valid firearms ID and is currently on parole. Similar to other homicide cases, Manabusin is a repeated violent offender, having a criminal history trailing back nearly a decade. We used the, the track record and, of course, the history as to prepare us as to who we're, you know, we're dealing with and everything. But, you know, there is a human side to the individual and um, understanding, you know, some of the choices and the decisions and some of the predicaments that they're in at that moment in time, that decision or that choice that they made, you know, may not have been the best decision, but it was a decision that was made by them. And it's really unfortunate that, you know, we continue to, um, you know, we're continuing to see this. Manabusin's next court hearing was set for April 27th.